One chief speech, Dennis, I chiefly loved. It was Aeneas' tale to Dido. <laughs> and thereabout of it especially where he speaks of Priam's slaughter. If it live in your memory, begin at this line. Uh, let me see it and then say, um, the uh, rugged Pyrrhus, like the Acanian beast, um, this is our so it, it begins with Pyrrhus. <laughs> the rugged Pyrrhus, he whose sable arms, black as his purpose, did the night resemble when he lay couched in the ominous horse, have now this dread and black complexion smeared with heraldry more dismal. Uh, <laughs> uh, head to foot now is he total gules, horridly tricked with blood of fathers, mothers, daughters, sons, baked and impassive with the parching streets that lend a tyrannous and damned light to their vile murders, roasted in wrath and fire, and this o'ersized with coagulate gore, with eyes like carbuncles, the hellish Pyrrhus old grandsire Priam seeks. Oh, God, my lord, well spoken, with good accent and good discretion. Hmm? Anon he finds him, striking two sorted Greeks. His antique sword, rebellious to his arm, lies where it falls, repugnant to command. Unequal matched, Pyrrhus at Priam drives, in rage strikes wide, but with the whiff and wind of his fell sword, the unnerved father falls. Then senseless Ilium, seeming to feel his blow, with flaming top stoops to his base, and with a hideous crash takes prisoner Pyrrhus' ear. For lo, his sword, which was declining on the milky head of Reverend Priam, seemed in the air to stick. So, as a painted tyrant, Pyrrhus stood, and like a neutral to his will and matter, did nothing. But, as we often see against some storm, a silence in the heavens, the rack stands still, the bold winds speechless, and the orb below as hush as death, and on the dreadful thunder doth rend the region. So, after Pyrrhus' pause, arouse his vengeance, sets him new work, and never did the Cyclops' hammers fall on Mars his armor, forged for proof eternal, with less remorse than Pyrrhus' bleeding sword now falls on Priam. Out, out, thou strumpet fortune! All you gods, in general, cannot take away her power. Break all the spokes and fellies from her wheel, and bowl the round knave down the hill of heaven, as low as to the fiend. Oh, this is too long. Watch over the barbers with your beard. Pretty say on. He's for a jig or a tail of baldry, or he sleeps. Say on. Come to Hecuba. But who? Oh, who has seen the Moblet Queen? The Moblet Queen? Oh, that's good. Moblet Queen is good. Run barefoot up and down, threatening the flame with this and room. A clout about that head where late the diadem stood, and for a robe about her lank and all our teamed loins, a blanket in the alarum of fear caught up, who this had seen, with tongue in venom steeped against fortune's state, would treason have pronounced? But if the gods themselves did see her then, when she saw Pyrrhus make malicious sport in mincing with his sword her husband's limbs, the instant burst of clamor that she made, unless things mortal move them not at all, would have made milch the burning eyes of heaven and passion in the gods. Look where he has not turned his color and his tears in his eyes. Pray you no more. It is well. I'll have thee speak out the rest soon. 